good afternoon everyone i'll be speaking today on the uh, uh, early childhood caries in children with special health care needs so any chronic disease always leads to a higher caries prevalence among children this is because of the insufficient awareness of the problem and uh, treating caries as a secondary problem caries teeth deserve as an odontogenic foci of infection and also the risk of spreading of infection or seeding of bacteria and their toxins into the blood is there evidence shows that poor oral care high snacking consumption and the lack of parental supervision contributes to worsening of oral health in children with medically compromising conditions so as a pediatric dentist it is important for us to have sound knowledge about the oral health parameters in medically compromising conditions now why is oral care of utmost importance in these individuals this is because any existing or potential source of oral or dental infection can lead to a greater morbidity and mortality in these children these children are on long term medications which increases their sugar exposure on the teeth they have a very poor immune response that predisposes them to infections which could be either bacterial viral or fungal a good oral health quality of life will definitely help these individuals to have a good general quality of life too so it is important to treat early childhood caries in these children very aggressively so that even the permanent dentition of these children is caries free so the initial assessment which would be done uh, will be about of the medical history you should know about the disease the condition what is the stage and prognosis what are the medications that the child is taken what are the precautionary measures that you should take in that particular disease or disorder and the contact of the medical team should always be kept handy in case if any emergency occurs the dental history review will require you to know about the fluoride exposure the habits trauma previous dental treatment if any has been <clears throat> given to them and every patient requires an individualized management approach which should be prompt and efficient according to the patient's medical history and the health status so before we begin any dental treatment it is very important that a consultation with the medical team is uh, necessary and is done and any prophylactic interventions which have to be done are followed the communication with the uh, medical team is important of the entire dental treatment plan that we aim to do many patients are immunocompromised and they might require an antibiotic prophylaxis many children also require anxiety management which could be in terms of pre medication or doing their treatment under nitrous oxide oxygen sedation the antibiotic prophylaxis which is generally followed is the one by the american heart association regime otherwise even the uh, patient's physician should be consulted if there is anything in addition that has to be done for that particular patient so we'll deal with four commonly seen medically compromising conditions in children today that are the congenital heart disease asthma renal disorders and leukemia also coming first to the congenital heart disease now children with complex congenital heart disease have got a higher disease burden this is because of the feeding difficulties prolonged hospitalization in the early years of life in these children the cardiac surgeries which they have to go again and again so early childhood caries in these children is always higher as compared to healthy children this is reported by various systematic reviews <coughs> and those children who are operated uh, for a congenital heart disease and who have complex congenital heart disease have ex a higher experience of caries compared to the healthy children poor oral health with high dental treatment needs will necessitate repeated dental procedures and this could sometime even delay the invasive invasive cardiac interventions in these children now what are the factors that predispose these children for to develop early childhood caries the foremost important risk factor for caries we know is the enamel defects or enamel hypoplasia so children with congenital heart disease have got developmental disturbances of enamel and the enamel is also hypomineralized that is it has low calcium and phosphorus levels now because of the heart failure related issues they require more calories so they require more number of meals and sometimes dietary intake during night can also predispose them for increased caries long term medications are given to them which are sweetened 
sweets may also be given by the family members for motivational purposes the diuretics which are given to them for controlling the blood pressure causes xerostomia which in turn leads to increased risk for early childhood caries the higher caries prevalence in these children is not related to the socio economic status or the level of dental care services that have been provided to them when we do the dental treatment of children with congenital heart disease it, it is very important that once a, the disease is diagnosed the the consulting physician or the cardiologist should refer the child to a pediatric dentist for regular oral health visits so that a good preventive treatment plan can be made for them these children are very uh, predisposed of having bacteremia which can lead to fatal infective endocarditis therefore endocarditis prophylaxis is recommended to children with major congenital heart disease to reduce the anxiety nitrous oxide oxygen sedation should be used and treatment under general anesthesia could be challenging in these uh, patients because many anesthetics alter the heme dynamics of the body so it should be only done under a tertiary care center with the consent of the cardiologist and hematologist pulp therapy is not recommended for primary teeth in these children who have got poor prognosis and for the permanent teeth also the careful selection should be done <coughs> for the tooth prior to starting any pulp therapy coming next to early childhood caries in pediatric bronchial asthma now bronchial asthma is a serious global public health problem and the most common chronic disease which children are affected about 10 to 15% of the children worldwide are affected with bronchial asthma now asthmatic children have nearly 1.5 times higher odds of the occurrence of dental caries in both the primary and the permanent dentition there are various factors which we will discuss that predispose a child with asthma for early childhood caries but various studies have shown that the drugs or the uh, medication which is given to them for the asthma is the main cause for it that is the short acting beta 2 agonist those children who have received beta 2 agonist have got more uh, dmft scores and more caries compared to that who are treated with corticosteroids or with uh, liquid medications so the exact mechanism which is responsible for the higher caries prevalence in children with asthma is not clear but it is believed to be due to many factors the airway obstruction in them leads to mouth breathing mouth breathing leads to xerostomia as a result of which the children also have increased sugary drinks anti asthmatic inhalers and the uh, sweetened uh, pediatric liquid medicaments which they take are also responsible then the psychological aspect of the disease and adoption of the unhealthy behaviors which includes frequent snacking and there are lack of physical activity seen in these children because <clears throat> of the disease as a result of which they have a more sedentary lifestyle leading to more of snacking missing the school days when and as a result of which the family indulges them with more uh, consumption of sweets also the respiratory disease in the earlier uh, years of life results in the formation of hypomineralized enamel lesions there is decreased oxygen supply to activate the ameloblast therefore enamel defects are also seen in these children which is responsible for more early childhood caries the exhaled breath of people with inflammatory uh, uh, airway disease has uh, consist of nitric oxide in high concentration which again is responsible for the demineralization of the teeth so these are the various factors which are drug related as well as the general health related that pose a more risk to these children for early childhood caries now discussing about the beta 2 agonist that is the salbutamol inhaler which is taken most frequently by the children uh, this is responsible for decrease in the salivary flow rate salivary ph as well as buffering capacity also causes alteration of salivary proteins and it relaxes the lower esophageal sphincter also as a result of which there is increased gastroesophageal reflex and also dental erosion in these children the powdered version of the medications are more cariogenic as compared to the aerosol versions once the dose is inhaled 80% of which precipitates in the mouth and it has also got sugar content 
what happens is when a child takes the inhaler is that immediately after taking the inhaler the oral ph considerably drops down along with it salivary flow also reduces now over a period of time when this occurs this leads to the increased colonization of streptococcus and lactobacillus which play a significant role in the caries and the fermentable carbohydrate in the form of lactose which is present in most of the inhaled medications is also responsible for caries in them now because there is low awareness of the patients and the parent there are generally no oral hygiene measures taken after the inhalation and medication which is taken during the evening or during night time when the saliva uh, secretion is already low causes more challenges for early childhood caries so to prevent early childhood caries in asthmatic children it, it is important to have an individualized intensive preventive dental program which includes brushing after the medication with fluoridated toothpaste regular use of fluoride rinses dietary advice to the uh, children and their parents and more frequent recall visits to the dentist the use of spacers to reduce the bioavailability of the medication and therefore reducing the caries risk is also suggested the best is to take the inhalation before breakfast in the morning which is followed by tooth brushing with a fluoride toothpaste and all the inhalations of the medication which occur through the day and night must be followed by rinsing with tap water and as we emphasize dietary counseling is very important at all the dental checkups with the children coming next to early childhood caries in children with leukemia leukemia is the most common childhood cancer with and acute lymphoblastic leukemia is commonly seen in children there have been many studies which have evaluated early childhood caries in children with leukemia but the strength of the evidence is weak as most of these studies were cross sectional therefore we couldn't find a causality link between leukemia and caries but recent meta analysis and uh, recent systematic reviews have found a higher prevalence of dental caries in children with leukemia irrespective of the treatment phase in which these children were what happens is during leukemia the child receives high chemotherapy and radiotherapy so the there are qualitative as well as quantitative changes in the dental enamel so there is hypoplastic enamel which is more susceptible to decay also uh, salivary gland dysfunction occurs because of the radio and the chemotherapy due to which the rhizostomia which is again a risk factor for early childhood caries majority of the studies have not assessed the sugar exposure in these children so for the dental management of these children our goal is to decrease the morbidity and mortality due to the oral infections and to facilitate good nutritional status in these children <clears throat> A dental examination must be done prior to the start of the cancer therapy so as to identify any potential sources of infection and it is very important to have consultation with hematologist and an oncologist before doing any dental procedure. All the elective dental procedures should be deferred for any child who did not has his first remission or who is in a state of relapse of leukemia. so routine preventive and restorative procedures can be done for a child who is in complete remission in that case also prior to the appointment <clears throat> or on the same day as the appointment a blood cell profile should be done which uh, analyzes the complete blood count and the platelet count to confirm that the patient is not at any risk of hemorrhage or infection for a child who has completed 2 years of remission and who no longer requires chemotherapy can be considered to be treated like a normal child but pulp therapy in these children is not recommended even the endodontic treatment uh, for the permanent teeth is not <coughs> recommended because even the slightest source of infection if it is left in the oral cavity can lead to increased morbidity in these children because of the suppression of granulocytes a platelet level of at least 1 lakh per millimeter cubic is adequate for all the procedures and the absolute neutrophil count of more than 1500 is good but if it is less than 1000 per millimeter cubic of blood then all the dental procedures should be deferred and an antibiotic prophylaxis is mandatory before conducting or before doing any dental procedure lastly coming to early childhood caries and renal disorders 
there are estimated about 70 million children worldwide who have some or the other form of kidney disease the general feature of this disease include anemia platelet dysfunction uremia impaired cell mediated immunity as well as disturbances of the calcium phosphorus and vitamin d metabolism which are very important for the formation and well functioning of the teeth now compared to the other disorders which all had increased caries prevalence renal disorders children have lower caries but high enamel defects in them we all know even the recent systematic reviews have confirmed that uh, enamel defects are considered to be the most predisposing factor for early childhood caries so what happens in these children that they do not have caries these are the various caries promotive factors that is the poor oral hygiene 31 to 83% of the children would have enamel hypoplasia which differs upon the study and the ethnicity the measurement tool which is taken for enamel hypoplasia these children are also on a carbohydrate rich diet to decrease the renal workload they have low salivary flow rate they are on long term medications but still what happens is that their saliva is very alkaline this happens because the salivary urea is high urea is not eliminated from the body because of the kidney disease high salivary urea disassociates as a result of which the salivary ph and the buffering is up, is very high that is why the salivary ph remains above the critical level and these children in spite of having poor oral hygiene and hypoplastic enamel are found to have less dental caries so what considerations we should keep in mind before treating these children always work in close collaboration with the nephrologist and eliminate any potential foci of infection because these children are quite immunosuppressed excessive stress should be avoided which could elevate blood pressure nitrous oxide sedation is a good treatment modality which can be done in these children because these children are on long term corticosteroids also which can lead to adrenal crisis therefore after consulting with the pediatrician the corticosteroid dose may have to be doubled while doing the dental procedures anti anxiety medications might be given you should avoid the use of nephrotoxic drugs and before any invasive procedures an antibiotic prophylaxis is important all the elective procedures should be done on the day after dialysis on those patients who are on renal dialysis so the take home message uh, from the presentation would be that pediatric dentists should emphasize about a healthy diet to maintain the nutritional status and emphasize food choices that do not promote caries the parents and the patients should be educated uh, should be uh, informed about the cariogenic potential of the liquid medicaments that they take the pediatric uh, the pediatric dentist should work in close collaboration with the medical team so that we take all the precautionary measures required to provide them <coughs> with uh, good oral hygiene and reduce the burden of early childhood caries in them and always assess the medical status appropriately for any antibiotic prophylaxis or any modifications in the drugs which have to be taken uh thank you all for the patient listening